What's up everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome to the Jose Mourinho Challenge. This isn't meant to be a perfect recreation of Jose Mourinho's career. This is more intended to take inspiration from Jose Mourinho's career and kind of follow in his footsteps a little bit. So obviously he started at a non-top five league. He made his name for himself in his first managerial job at uh, Porto. So we're also going to start at a non-top five league. I've decided we're going to start either in Holland or Portugal. We want to kind of recreate what he did in his career. And to recreate how he started his career, I feel like we have to do that. It has to be at a non-top five club. And I think Portugal or Holland give us the best opportunity to really recreate what he did. So if we look at his career, in his first two seasons, his only two seasons with Porto, he won the league, he won the cup, and he won the Champions League. So those are going to be my goals. I'm going to use a non-top five league. I'm going to try to win the league and the cup and the Champions League with a club at a non-top five league. So it's going to be either in Holland or Portugal. I'm only going to select the top clubs. The way I'm going to select is I'm actually going to, like I said, I'm unemployed. So I'm just going to advance until one of the top jobs in Holland or Portugal become available. That's going to be either Feyenoord, PSV, Ajax, Porto, Sporting, or Benfica. Once one of those jobs becomes available, I will take charge of their manager. And it will be my goal to win the league, the cup, and the Champions League with one of those clubs. Obviously, they also won the Europa League, but I'm not actually going to focus on the Europa League in this series just because it doesn't really fit in with me trying to be the best I can. Like, I obviously, I don't really want to be in the champion or be in the Europa League. The whole goal is to get as far in the Champions League as possible. So, if I do make it into the Europa League group for knockout stages, I'll try to win the league. I'll try to win the Europa League, but it's not going to be one of my main focuses. It's not going to be one of my goals for this series. First goal is to win the league, the cup, and the Champions League in either. Holland or Portugal, then I can move to a top five league. And once I move to a top five league, my new goal, my second goal, is to win the league and win the cup in three of the top five leagues. They don't necessarily have to be the same leagues that Jose Mourinho won. It doesn't have to be Italy, England, and Spain. It can be France. It can be Germany. It just has to be three of the top five leagues, both the cup and the league with one team in each division. That is the goal. The Also, the third goal is to win the Champions League with a team in the top five leagues. Obviously, that'll be a little bit easier than the start. The start's going to be our hardest part is trying to win a Champions League with a non-top five league. But we do have to win the Champions League at least once when we're managing a top five league team. So those are the goals. That's going to be the recreation of Jose Mourinho's career I'm going to go for. it. It's not going to be as easy maybe as it sounds because, I mean, it's, the first part's going to be hard. There's a big gap now between the best teams in Portugal and Holland and your PSGs, your Man Cities, your Real Madrids, your Bayern Munichs. There's a larger gap between those teams than there used to be back when Jose Mourinho won it in 2004. So it's not going to be easy to win the Champions League with one of these teams. That's going to be the, probably the largest, the hardest part. And also, I'm not necessarily going to recreate Jose Mourinho's career in which he only stayed at a club for a maximum of three years. He didn't spend a long time at one certain club over a period of time. I'm not going to perfectly recreate that because I feel like it's going to take me a while to win the Champions League in Holland or Portugal. So I'm not going to necessarily go by that part of his career, but I am going to go try to abide by his tactical principles. Obviously, he's known as a defensive first manager. I'm going to focus primarily on staying solid defensively. That doesn't mean I'm not going to attack or try to use my advantage I have against lesser teams. Jose Mourinho took advantage when he was the better team, too. He just also made sure he was strong defensively, you know, first and foremost. So I'm going to stay strong defensively, trying to concede the least amount of goals as I can. Like, my goal is to finish the least amount of conceded every single year. That's probably not going to be actually going to happen, but that's the goal I'm going to shoot for. So, yeah, that's how I'm going to recreate Jose Mourinho's career. It's going to start with, an, with a Holland or Portugal job. Now I'm going to advance forward until one of those jobs becomes available, and we'll see what club you're going to start the Jose Mourinho Challenge with. And we are back, and that is because a job is available, and we are taking it. I was hoping to get a job before January, you know, late December, early January, maybe, so I could have a transfer window. That didn't happen. But we are in March 24th of 2022, and a job has become available with four games left in the league season and not really anything to play for. So this won't be consequential for this year, but we're going to be able to start a new year fresh 
with a team that we're hoping that we could take to a league win, cup win, and Champions League win. And that club is in Portugal. And we are starting with Sporting. The Sporting job is available. They are fourth place in League of Portugal with four games left to go, a chance of finishing third, but they do place Porto and Benfica in the last four games. And they are well off the pace of Porto and Benfica, which is why they got fired. So the best we can really hope for is third. We can't really go, can't go further than fourth. So guaranteed at least Europa League football. Maybe I can win the Europa League. We'll see. But I am starting with Sporting. Let's just not beat around the bush anymore. Let's add ourselves as a manager. I'm not going to apply and hope they accept me. I got myself good uh, badges and everything, but for this first club, I'm just going to take control over it. From any clubs further here, here on, I'm going to apply for and interview for and hopefully get offered the job. But like I said, for this first one, we're going to add a new manager, use the profile. You're going to add ourselves to Portugal and Sporting. That's going to be where we start our managerial career in the Jose Mourinho Challenge. There it is. They hired Paris as their manager. I wanted to wait until the job opening was actually available. I just felt like it made the most sense of kind of following in his footsteps is for a job to be available in the first place. So, sporting jobs available. We've taken it. Media prediction was second and their fourth. I guess that's why they got fired. I mean, they obviously, they won the league last year, so... They've had, what, what trophy is this? A European Cup Winners Cup in 1964, 19 League of Portugal wins, 17 Portugal placard wins, but other than that, no European trophies. So we're going to aim to get them a Champions League. It's like this is what the starting formation is supposed to look like, a 4-3-3, which is the formation that Jose Mourinho likes to use. Maybe his favorite formation, even. So that is probably what we're going to use. Like I said, I'm going to try to play using his tactics. Uh, let's go every fortnight for a meeting with the backroom staff. And here we are. We've only got four games to go. I don't think we're going to be judged on where we finish this year. At least we better not with four games to go. Two of them against Porto and Benfica. Yep, they are not judging on the League of Portugal. They're not judging on the placard because they're obviously out of it. Nothing else is important. It's all about next year. So I kind of like that. I kind of like we're going to start fresh with a whole new, whole new season. Build the team in my image. Accept that vision. Uh, sporting players in the last year of the deals. Antonio Adon, I believe he was their goalkeeper. Yeah, three and a half star. Important players. A one year extension clause, so we'll probably be accepting that. He's our only player as contract running out, so that's good. You know, else leaving on a free or anything like that. Uh, Minagre is joining Sporting. I believe from Wolves, right? Yes, from Wolves. Uh, anyone else leaving? Doesn't really look like it. Bruno Gaspar's transfer listed. Fidal is leaving to join PSV. He's an okay player, so he's probably not a huge loss. 32 years old, center back. He's actually pretty good. Those attributes are actually not bad. So that kind of sucks losing him, but we'll see. That's a big squad. A lot of players out on loan, though. Let's get rid of those players out on loan. Uh, not at club. Still pretty big, but let's build our tactic. It's going to be Jose Mourinho inspired. And I think we're going to go with the 4-3-3. Says that's what they're best at. Let's actually just go to the squad screen and start putting in the best players. So Dan is going to be our goalkeeper, obviously. Probably best position are our right backs. We've got Escayo, Castillo. You know who else can play right back? Pedro Poro. That's definitely not going to be our right back. On loan from Manchester City. I might see if we can get him back for another year. I know Pedro Poro is good. Look at those attributes. He's very good. So he's best as a winger, but he... 13 tackling, only 9 marking, 11 positioning, but he's pretty good. Let's see if we can get him on another year before we do anything else. They're looking to give him a chance in the first team. So it looks like we're not going to be able to get him on loan just yet. Might push it a little bit further and see maybe down the line a little bit if they'll be willing to send him out on loan. There's our right back. Two best center backs. Coates obviously is one of our best center backs. He's a very good defender in this game. And Inacio. The, one of the biggest Wonder Kids center backs in the game. Looks like we might have got not gotten the best potential role, though. Only four-star potential. So, we might not have gotten the best 
not got the best role there, but he's still a good player, Gonzalo Inacio, and he's left-footed, which is perfect. He's obviously going to be next to Cuates. Left back, that might be an issue. We've got Ruben Vinagre, but he's only a two-star player. Mateus Reese, only a two-star player. And that's all they have a left back. Let's look like a position we're going to have to target in the next transfer window. They also have Luis Segovia, who can play left back. He's not bad. Very strong. More of a center back, but let's look at these other two guys. Reese, he's okay. He's not a bad player. How old is he? 27, so he's not going to grow anymore. And then Ruben Vinagre, probably going to be the starter. I don't know. He doesn't. I don't think he looks as good as Reese does. He's better going forward, but he's pretty poor defensively. He is more of a winger. Unlike Pedro Porra being able to play fullback pretty well, Vinagre is more of a winger. Let's compare him and Rice. Reese, Rice, however you want to pronounce it. That's a good idea. Uh, Vinagre. So, yeah, Vinagre way better attacking. Reese way better defensively. So, they might just kind of rotate in and out depending on the situation. If we're playing a smaller team, and I think we can play a more attacking fullback, then Vinagre starts. If we need to be more defensively solid, Reese starts. Uh, who do we have next? Belenensis Sad, who I believe are not doing very well. If we look at the other oh, eight. Say so their job was available earlier in the season. I figured they'd be doing worse than that, but eighth place is not bad. Is it away or at home? That's going to be kind of important. Is it home? Then Benfica. So for this next match, I'm probably going to play Benagre at left back. Let's see, whether they have a defensive mid, Manuel Ugarte, a player with the good amount of potential. Danielle Bergancha, Jao Polina. We got some good defensive mid options. Some of which can play center mid too, but they got Mateus Nunez, who's a pretty good center mid. More attacking player, he looks pretty good. Uh, so one of these players is going to play midfield. One's going to play defensive midfield. Let's see who they who fits best in the midfield. Polina is definitely a out and out Jose Mourinho ball winning defender. That is a very Jose Mourinho player. Garte, not as good defensively. He says he's a ball winning midfielder, but he has 10 tackling. He's got 14 passing, 13 vision. He's more of a box to box, I guess, maybe. Good work rate, good stamina, good aggression and bravery. Relatively fast with 14 pace. I don't think he's a ball winning midfielder, so he might actually be the starter. But let's look at Bagancha. He's a playmaker there. He's definitely a playmaker. So I think I'm going to play this kind of like Jose Mourinho did with Chelsea, where his defensive midfielder was a ball winner. His midfielders, one was a box-to-box, -box, which I think is going to be Ugarte, and one was an, a, pretty much an attacking central midfielder, which I think is going to be Nunez. So I think I'm going to kind of recreate that a little bit. And Paulinho is going to be defensive mid. My only question is, if I'm going to play this like Jose Mourinho, do I play the wingers? Up higher, or do I play them back starting deeper? To give us more of a solid defensive shape. Because I do think I want them to help out defensively quite a bit. So I might actually go with this. If the players can play there. Let's see if our wingers can play there. So Bruno Tabata can kind of play on the wings. Both the, the wide midfield spots. He is left-footed. Pretty good dribbling first touch, passing, technique, vision. He could be a wide playmaker. He's good as an inverted winger, too. Uh, this guy is terrible. Let's just not even keep him anywhere near the first team. Uh, Nuno Santos, is I know, is a very good player, but he's suspended. I've considered signing him a few times because I think he's really good. He can play that deeper role. Also left-footed. He looks, he looks very good as a winger, an inverted winger. Uh, they got Pablo Sarabia on loan from PSG. Is there a buy option there? No. So probably not going to use him extensively in the first team because he's not going to be here for more than four games. So I will use Poro just because I want to win these games. But I don't think I need to use Sarabia. He could be a backup player for the wings. He's left-footed as well. A lot of left-footed wingers. And then Pedro Gonzalez, supposedly their best attacking midfielder is his best position, but he can play on the wings. Huh. He's really good. Do I need to play an attacking midfielder now? Maybe I'll play a 4-2-3 because this guy's really good. 
and he can't play a deeper role. So maybe I do play him out on, on the right hand side as a. I mean, I don't think he's a Rom Dorda because he has that dribbling, and I want to take advantage of that. Maybe a Trek Bartista. Does fit the role very well. His passing isn't amazing, but he's got everything else. He's four never possible, runs the ball through center, tries to kill the ball, shoots from distance. Pedro Gonzalez. He can also play central midfield, so I could play him as that attacking midfielder, but I kind of want to play him and, uh, where is he, Mateus Nunez. They're both pretty good. I think, I'm okay, I think I'm going to play a 4-2-3-1, actually. But I think I'm going to play a 4-2-3-1 with two defensive midfielders. I think I'm going to play this. It's 4-2-3-1, kind of, with a little bit more defensive wingers and two defensive midfielders. And Paulinho and Nunez can be our defensive midfielders. And instead of Bracancia, we can have... Where is he? Pedro Gonzalez playing that attacking midfielder. And up top... We've got Tiago Tomas, I think, is going to be our starting striker. He's wanted. He's got wants a new deal reflecting his ability, so I might be giving him a new contract pretty soon. Good, young, fast. All right, we'll be using Tiago Tomas at striker. So the wing is going to be Santos and Tabata. Two left footers, so one winger and one inverted winger. Uh, I think the difference, main difference between wingers and inverted wingers is... Their ability creating, I believe, is because invert wingers have more put into their passing and vision, I think, than a winger. If I can find a winger. And yeah, they're just passing. They don't have, their technique is important. Vision's not important. The mentals aren't quite as important as a inverted wingers is. You don't have to worry about composure and decisions quite as much. Work rate's more important for an inverted winger. So if we compare him to Tabata, Tabata is definitely not the inverted winger. Tabata is definitely the winger on the left-hand side. He's going to play midfield left, and whenever he's fit and available, Santos will play midfield or right. So that's going to be, let's go clean slate. That's going to be the lineup. Uh, they're not going to play all these formations. Tomas is probably going to be an advanced forward. Salvas, is he very good in the air? No, five foot nine. Eight jumping reach, so he is best as a shadow striker. I don't know if one he's a shadow striker and an advanced forward, though, and I don't know if Tomas is anything other than an advanced forward. He can't play pressing forward. Not as good on support or defend. He is not a very good supportive pressing forward because of lack of passing. I mean, actually rule him out a little bit more as from advanced forward because passing is important, is important for advanced forward as well. Maybe a false nine? Oh, passing is pretty important there, too. He's not a he's not a great poacher. I think he is best as a pressing forward. Can I run a pressing forward in a shadow striker? Would that actually work? I might try it. Shadow strikers do have importance on their work rate. I think more than an attacking midfielder attack, so defensively he should help out more. Let's look at the actual instructions for a shadow striker. Take more risks, dribble more, get for the forward, move into channels. So nothing really defensively. Attacking midfielder attack is just getting more forward, which probably I'd choose one of these two roles for him. He's not really the Urzel type of player like he like Jose Mourinho had when he played a 4-2-3-1 at Real Madrid. But I think something Jose Mourinho definitely did was, you know, played to his players' best abilities. So I think Isavas is a very good shadow striker. So I think he would use him there. So Santos, this right hand side is going to be inverted winger. I think I'm going to play both my wingers on support. Uh, fullbacks, Poros better defensively. So he's another thing about Jose Mourinho's tactics. He usually has one more defensive and one more attacking fullback. Sometimes they kind of switch off depending on which side of the ball is. So I don't know. I might play both of them as fullback support. And they'll just get forward more depending on the balls going down their flank. I don't know. I don't know how to perfectly recreate that. I do think he definitely uses fullbacks, though. 
I think Minagre has to be a fullback attack. And then Korok maybe can be a fullback on automatic. So he can go on attack if we need him to need to score late. He can go on defensive if we need to hold on to a lead late. Pelini is definitely gonna be like a ball winner or not, maybe not an anchor man with the back two. Actually, it does say anchor man's a good with deep line playmakers, right? Uh or is that half? There's, I thought there was some role that said they're used well against next to a or is it gonna Volante? No. I swear there's a role that said he's used well next to a deep line playmaker. It does say they sit between the hole of the defensive midfield, intercepting moves, winning the ball, and laying off simple passes to more creative teammates. So it would make sense to playing him next to a deep line playmaker. We'll start with Anchorman. Actually, what's his movement ability like? Is he? Yeah, I think he's fine as an Anchorman. He's really strong, really good in the air, but not fast. I think he has actually a pretty good Anchorman. Play him there. Uh, Nunez is going to be the deep line playmaker on support. Uh, any of these ball players? I don't think Quatis is. He's not bad. He's got decent first touch, decent passing. His vision's not amazing. And he's slow, so I have to kind of take advantage, take note of that. Uh, Nacio is a very good ball player, so he's going to be our ball player. Usually, sometimes he has two. Jose Mourinho he uses two ball players, but feels like usually he has one that's better on the ball than the other. So I think this works out well with the Nacio and Coates. Dan, I feel like just what, best best sweeper keeper to defend. He's got good rushing out, good one on ones, but acceleration's not very good. He does have good composure. Vision's bad. I do think he's best to sweep a keeper to defend. So I will play him there. Now we get on to instructions. I do think pressing forward for our Jose Mourinho tactic actually works pretty well. So for our main tactic, which is going to be our more attacking tactic, I'm going to play it on balanced because I really like balanced mentalities, but this is going to be the more attacking, the more high tempo. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to go between higher and extremely high. Gonna go a little bit more direct. Maybe not more direct, maybe just standard, but I'm not gonna go shorter passing because that's not really a Jose Mourinho thing. He likes to go deep from his center backs if they have the pass on. So I want to give them plenty of passing freedom. Uh play out of defense. I don't know, because Jose Mourinho like he kind of does. He gives them the freedom to make passes to the wings and up top. So they don't necessarily just get the ball to hoof it. I'm going to leave that for now. I might come back to that. Uh, work the ball into the box, I think, is something he would do. Maybe not. I am going to try to play a, a little bit counterattacking. I am going to go extremely high with the tempo. I'm going to play slightly more narrow. I'm going to run at defense. This isn't full-on counterattacking. I'm not going to play deep line and just only hit on the break. But I'm going to be aggressive. Uh, we're going to go low crosses because we do not have much height up front. In transition, definitely going to counter press and counter. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think we're going to distribute quickly. Hodner, Jose Mourinho, uh, goalkeepers would distribute both long or to their center backs. He liked to go long, especially with Chelsea. When he has a target man striker, he likes to go long to them and win the knockdowns, but we don't have that with Thiago Tomas up top. So I think it makes more sense to go shorter, but maybe giving him the option to go out to the wings of the long throw or you know quick short kick would be a good option. So I think distribute quickly makes sense. Out of possession, I'm going to stick with a standard defensive line because we've got Coates who's not very fast, and I don't think Jose is really... If anything, he plays a deeper line, but even again, when he's supposed to be the better team, I still think he plays standard at most. Maybe he'd go slightly higher, but I'm going to go standard. I'm actually going to go stretch the lines out a little bit. Much higher line of engagement. A lot of pressing, so almost Gagan pressing, but almost counterattacking. Just kind of a hybrid tactic here. Trigger the press probably as much as I can. I'm, I am going to prevent short goalkeeper distribution because we have the defensive midfielder who's really good in the air. And we have two cinemax that are pretty good in the air. So I think we could, if we force him to go long, we could win a lot of those knockdowns. 
gets stuck in, I think it just makes sense. And he likes to defend narrow, so it's forced the opposition outside. So the players sit more narrowly and, and bite them to go down the flanks where we were pretty solid defensively. I think that's a tactic. I think that's the main tactic we're going to play when we're the better team or when we need a goal. Maybe I'll switch the mentality if we really need a goal, but I think that's going to be the go-to. Uh, then I'm going to create one more. Let's load that tactic. Copy that tactic. I think we're going to play the same shape, but this is when we're not as good and we need to defend. I'm going to go cautious. I'm going to go... I might not change anything here. Low crosses has to be like the only thing I might change because when I, I like when I counterattack, like when I extensively counterattack, to go shorter passing, to go a more fluid counterattacking tactic. But playing it in the Jose Mourinho style, I feel like standard would be better. I think I'm gonna stick. I think I'm gonna stick with this in possession tactic, the way it is: narrow, run a defense. I don't think anything's going to change there. I don't think anything's going to change here. I think the only thing that's going to change is out of possession. And the mentality. So, instead of playing standard in a high line of engagement, we're going to drop the lines to a lower defensive line and a lower line of engagement. Let them hold the ball in their half of the pitch as much as they want. Open up space for our quick striker, quick wingers. Pretty quick shadow striker to hit them on the counterattack. I'm going to press a little bit less, just so we're not pulled out of position as much. I want to stay at mostly a solid defensive shape. Something else I might do is be more disciplined. I might make that one change. Because I don't quite want as much creative freedom in terms of positioning. Because I want a strong, solid defensive shape. I might even change that for my main tactic. Something Jose Mourinho would do if a fullback went forward, the the midfielder on that side would drop in and kind of fill the position that he gives up. So I, I do think we need to be a little fluid. But I don't know. I think I'm going to start just for the defensive tactic. I'm going to go with and be more disciplined. If I feel like it works very well, I might change it in the main tactic. And I don't think there's anything else I want to change here. I think those are the two tactics. Not much difference, but I a lot of times I don't think you need much difference. You don't want a whole lot to change because it's going to be hard for them to adapt to two completely different tactics. So just a few changes in instructions, same shape, and a different mentality. I don't. Is there anything I want to change in terms of the roles? I might not go attacking on the fullback. I might go support and then automatic. Actually, I might just go automatic on both. I think on cautious, they still stay support with an automatic instruction. I think they only go to defend. You go on defensive. So I think both on support is works. If I need to go defensive, they'll both go on defend, and I think that works as well. Uh, might play Nunez more defensive. He's not very good defensively, but I think I want two defensive midfielders in front of the back line. Keep the wingers on support. I think those are the tactics. And I think that's how we're going to start the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Sporting, our first game coming up. It's going to be against Belenenses, then Benfica, then Braga, who are third, and Porto. So he faced first, second, and third in three of our last four matches. This might not be a pretty ending to the season, but we're going to be able to start afresh, be able to start anew. I can build the team in my image. I feel like the team already is pretty good, but there's definitely positions left back that I feel like we can improve. So yeah, I'm excited to get into it. That's going to be where we're going to end for today. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.